Thank you for still being here. It's been a long week, but I'm super happy that you are here. I'm here. I've given a lot of talks, so my voice might fail in the middle of this. If that happens, please excuse me. I'll get some water, but let's do this. Um, in this talk, I'm going to cover how to build applications with Django and Snowflake, which is, a, for a lot of people, it's kind of a big surprise. Why would anyone put Django and Snowflake together? I gave a... I have a big talk that I gave last year at DjangoCon explaining the whole history of how I started noticing that a lot of people that use Django were asking for a connector to Snowflake because they have their data on Snowflake. And the first suggestion always is, just copy your data outside of Snowflake, put it on Postgres, put it on MySQL. But it turns out, as some of you might know, and my, maybe that's why you are in this talk, is that it's much better to keep all the data in one place, avoid moving data around, uh, have it fully secured, and have a connector that just works. And what happened is that um, many people started implementing these connectors in a separate way. Then one company, Cedar Cares, um, sponsored Tim Graham to create a connector. Uh, and Tim Graham is a Django fellow that really understands Django. He created the connector. And now it's available. So we are going to go a little bit deeper into that. Who here uses Django? Any Django fans? Excellent. Uh, who is curious about what is Django? Excellent. Well, I'm glad that you came to this session. Um, so that's me, developer advocate. Find me on Twitter. Find me on LinkedIn. And this is the announcement we had back in May. So it's a pretty new announcement that we took that connector that Tim Graham developed, that Cedar Cares sponsored, and now it lives in Snowflake Labs. And Snowflake is officially supporting uh, its ongoing maintenance. So we're doing features. Uh, Anurag, our PM, is uh, listening to your feature request. And we're working with Francisco that's there on the booth. Uh, he's managing, yes, he's very happy to say hi, that we are moving forward with this. So this is my agenda for today. Why is Snowflake sponsoring this connector? Because people want it, they need it. Uh, thousands of you, people keep asking this on Stack Overflow, it has thousands of views. We have to uh, do a quick overview of what is Django, why Django and Snowflake, how does it compare to Streamlit? Streamlit is our big offering for apps. But Django is different. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of code and advanced tips. So who wants Snowflake as a bucket for Django? Thousands of views on Stack Overflow. They have independent implementations. Uh, the Django mailing list discusses why you want this. They're big companies. Um, uh, I remember one. They did not allow me to share their name, but they allowed me to say that they have theme parks in Orlando and in Flo and California. Uh, and yes, they're using it, and they're using it because they needed the solution. And now that it's on PyPy, you can, it has thousands of downloads every month. The quick story that I was telling you earlier, in 2021, we had this Cedar Care sponsor in the development. 2022, we saw the adoption going up, but no maintenance. And that's why in May 2023, Snowflake starts sponsoring it. What is Django? Uh, Avers, let me read this one. A versatile Python framework widely used to power large websites and countless intranet sites. It has comprehensive tools, scalability, and emphasis on security. Django provides developers with an efficient and developer-friendly environment. It's flexible and robust. It's one of the top choices, enabling the creation of powerful web applications for various purposes. So if you have an intranet, uh, of course, native apps on, on Streamlit are great. But if you want full flexibility and to have like this great um, ecosystem that has been developing for years, uh, it's super mature. Uh, you can choose Django. Uh, if you go to the Stack Overflow survey, 
15% of the web frameworks are in that survey are, are using Django. It's also a great REST backend if you need a REST backend for how to, to connect more uh, APIs to Snowflake. Uh, it's powered by Python. We love that. And the URORM is super cool too. I have another note here on powering large websites, just to give you an idea of how big uh, Django can be. When Instagram started years ago, they built Instagram on Django. And they are still using, Instagram still uses Django as their main backend. Now, they have keep making improvements to it, but that apply to their use case. But yes, Instagram uses it. Uh, I, and I know because they have been delivering talks of how they use it. They use it. Um, and yeah, a lot more people, huge and small websites use it. When we compare it with Streamlit, Streamlit is super agile. You write three lines of Python code and you get an interactive website. But with Django, you have the freedom to write web pages in a traditional way. Uh, if you, you know any web developers, they know how to do HTML. They have their favorite frameworks. They have React. They can bring all of that together without having to limit themselves to the options that Streamlit gives them. So, Yes, it's a matter of choice. And of course, it's not only Streamlit. You can build websites and you can build dashboards in many other platforms. These are just two examples. Now, Django developers, uh, when I go talk to them, why would they choose Snowflake? Why not choose the traditional MySQL or Postgres that they use? Uh, this, I shouldn't go very deep. You know how. Uh, Snowflake is a market leader. Companies have their data on Snowflake. They can forget about the indexes. They can send the, all the compute power to Snowflake. Uh, I delivered this talk at a conference. I was at the booth, and someone told me, hey, I already tried doing this with, with Redshift, and it didn't work. And of course, uh, with Redshift, you are way more limited on how do you divide the compute power uh, with Snowflake. Yes, you have your analytical people, and you have your Django in a different warehouse. Data governance is great. Uh, for Python developers, being able to move Python to Snowflake, that's super cool. The data in the Snowflake park marketplace, and hopefully soon, Unistore. Next slide, if this works. Let's go over a little bit of code. If you want to try any of this, my teammate, Gilberto, that you might have seen these days, he wrote a full quick start. He wrote the video. I'm going to show you some pieces of it. Um, I skipped step one to four, but the big point is that you can just do Python Django install. You, install, you can install Django. You install the Django Snowflake connector that corresponds to the same version. We, as I was telling you, we are keeping the Django connector in la, uh, updated at the same time as the main Django. Then it's, this is how you connect Django to Snowflake. Just set up the authentication, typical username or password, or private public keys, uh, however you need to connect it. And then Django has this command that is my run your migrations when you are defining objects in Django. Django takes care of creating those objects in the database. Uh, specifically in this case, the basic Django uh, tables for all that is authentication. Uh, and it just creates it. If you connect one to the other, Django now can uh, talk to Snowflake. And this is the cool part, uh, connecting the data that you have in Snowflake to Django. You can use the Django ORM where you define things like, I have a table called trip. In my Python world, trip is a, is a class. And we connect what are the two fields that are the columns. And then the, the ORM knows how to make the rest of the work easy for your developers. Uh, this is, in this case, InspectDB is looking at the tables that I have and creating those, obje those objects in Python that I can uh, customize. And then we're in. It, as Django comes with its own admin interface, 
if you set it up, then if basically you create your admin password, you can start browsing all your Snowflake objects, modifying them, etc. cetera. Uh, but you can go way, way deeper. Uh, as you are learning about Django, uh, you should know that Django uses the model view template structure. Model is where you put all of your Python logic of this is how my website works. The views are the ORM layer. Uh, sorry, I just confused model with views. Models are my database objects. Views are my logic. And templates is uh, what I'm going to present. Basically, you get to write HTML, and Django processes and brings the logic from the views uh, and the models. To give you an example here, these are two models. I'm connecting Stack Overflow questions to Stack Overview Overflow answers. The mapping uh, works one to one. I have two tables. I have these columns. And two interesting things that I have lighted here is one, I'm telling Django that it's not managed. Man Django shouldn't take care of creating these tables. I already have these tables inside my Snowflake account. And when I'm talking about the answers, uh, the parent is a foreign key. With this, the uh, ORM will know how to write the queries later. So I have an answer. I have a question. I have them connected with this little annotation. And then my view can use these objects. For example, I'm going to get a list of all the Stack Overflow questions. Uh, with prefetch related, that's an optimization that uh, lets Django know that instead of doing the select one by one, it can bring uh, all of the related answers. I'm going to order by the view count. And that's how I get the, a list of questions. And then I get to render my template. And in my template, this is simple HTML plus annotations. So I'm going to go over each question. I gave to this template the list of questions. And what's interesting is not only that I can go over the list of questions. You can see inside that for each question, I'm looking for all the answers and printing all the answers too. And Django, the ORM here, take, took care of connecting, writing the right SQL. And because I had the prefetch related, um, prefetch related annotation, it didn't run one new query for each answer. It got all the answers, and it was optimized. So that's really cool. So when we're writing Django, we should learn about how to optimize with Django for when it contacts the database. Uh, of course, the first tip that they give you in their official docs is use indexes. We don't need indexes. That's cool. Uh, they teach people from the Django world to push the compute, the filtering to the database, uh, do the prefetch related, how to retrieve less rows. The Django cache works really well. With Django, you can create insert updates. You should do them in bulk instead of one, one, bam. It's just one annotation. And of course, Snowflake lets you look at the whole query performance. This is an example for me. For example, I love the data that we have on the marketplace from Noma. Those are giant uh, time series with a lot of data. But connecting them, this data in Snowflake to Django is a little more complex, but not too much. But the kind of things that you have to do is that Django asks for that each model should have a unique ID for each row. This time series don't have it. We just can create a view and create a composite unique ID. Then the time series has a lot of values that we want to map, like a question and answer, or like as we have a time series with all the currencies on the world, we need to list in another view the currencies. So it would be a select distinct of the currencies as my this is my currency object, and then I have the timeline and by creating those views, Django takes care of the rest. You can, if you are building dashboards, you can use your favorite JavaScript dashboard. Everything is open. This is one example using Django charts. Uh, I'm not going to go super deep. And of course, you can uh, leverage the Snowflake data governability. With Django, uh, I have not found a way to push down the users. 
so your Snowflake users cannot be pushed down. So you are just using one user for Django. And that user in that role is getting all the filter at the Django level. But then you inside Django, you can use their security framework if you want to split it like that. Otherwise, you can use Streamlit and uh, have the full, uh, the, the, the list. sorry, my voice. You can use the Snowflake connected apps to have the full security. And of course, once you start using Django, the question is where to deploy it. Uh, if it's a small website, uh, anywhere will, run, will work. You can push all the compute down to Snowflake. But you can, there is easy to use, for example, uh, Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. And any uh, host will give you these possibilities. Of, or of course, uh, I would love to see in my future slides how I use the new container service. But that we may see next year. And with that, uh, I want to invite you to keep learning. Uh, thank you for staying until now. It's been long days, but I'm super happy you came here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.